Hey guys, how's it going? So I went on a pick and I was getting another machine and this one decided to come home with me too. It was offered to me for free. I don't know much about it. He had gotten it cheap or free from the original owner and it had lost a spark on him. A Benelli Andretti, Andretti, the racer edition, Z50 scooter. My guess it's a Honda clone of sorts from China. You now know about as much about it as I do. Keys in it, which is good. It has 528 miles on it. They started to pick away at it, trying to figure out what was going on. And apparently just kind of gave up. So I got it as is. I figured we'd make for a good video. See if we can revive it. See if what, if not, what happened to it. And we'll go from there. Is that a Yamaha? No. Yamata. The Yamata. <laughs> All right, so let me go get her tied down, bring her up in the air, and we'll start getting into it. See if we can figure out what went wrong. Because the first thing we do, we'll just turn the key on, see if anything powers up. Man, it's totally stone dead. All right, let's go throw a jumper pack on it. You know, one of the first things like this, I kind of like to go back and just confirm everything. Especially sometimes, you know, over like two people, the story gets lost. What was that game? Telephone? I think the tail light came on. Why would the tail light come on with the key? Because the key's on. <laughs> Let's see if we get any kind of crank out of it. I think we have to hold the one of the brake levers in. And it looks like the spark plug's out of it. And where's cranked on it? It's worn. There we go. Right. If it does crank over, that sounds good. Let's go. Get her up in the air, we'll get a look at that spark plug, see if it's doing anything. And so the plug's got to get grounded out to metal somewhere, inside of that case right there. So we'll give her a shot. It's got spark. It's got plenty of spark. <laughs> I wonder if it may have another issue, I don't know. But I'll tell you this, we're going to go throw the spark plug back in it. I'm going to dump a little bit of fuel in the carb, see if she kicks off. Alright, see if she's got a working throttle. Not frozen. Let's go give her a little pre-mix down the throat. Give her a fire. Think she'll go? I think it's gonna go. <laughs> Smoking pretty good out the exhaust. Let me back you up a little. You give it some throttle too. It kind of, yeah, you really lost smoke. It kind of sounded like as soon as you let off the key, it went away, which might be the case. And a little bit more. Keep going. <laughs> She's a smoker, though. Trying. I don't want. I wonder if uh, something else happened to it. That is not the case with the, the no spark. He did say. I'm I kind of bring it back a little bit. That it was. He was riding it and it died. It's just pumping oil out. Where does that come around the plug hole? Or I wonder if there is a oil feed line to the carburetor that's off a separate. Where is that coming out of? This is just overflow, that's not it. And it's dripping right from there. See anything? The exhaust? Uh, the flange there maybe? Let's go give her a little bit more fuel, a little bit more prime, and see what she does. There's the oil tank right there. The oil feed. Yeah. We'll prime it one more time, see what we get. Let me try feeding a little bit of gas while I'm Ha <laughs> ha 
so something else is going on. Uh, either the crankcase is just really full of oil and it's pumping all that out, or it maybe something happened to the top end where it's uh, possibly grenaded itself a little bit. I'm gonna go with some fans on, air us out a little, and a little cloud floating, and uh, we'll dig into it a little bit more. Let's go pop that plug back out of it. And we'll see if it's oil soaked. Well, I guess it would be. Yeah. I'm not sure it's dripping. It's dripping something else now. That gas from the float ball. Okay, we have no idea how long this has been sitting either, but right now. Leaving his mark on the bench is dripping fuel. I'd say we should probably, maybe we'll pop that carb off or that bowl off. And we'll see what kind of condition the fuel system is in. I wonder if the oil was allowed to keep going and it kind of filled up the jug. I'm not sure how these are set up. A lot of times they have like a little metering system when it's running that allows it to have fuel, uh, fuel and oil really. Uh, and as you work the throttle, it allows more and less uh, premix oil to get added into it. I would say it's that line going across. Let's go take a quick peek on the other side. So it was this line right here. Yeah, where the throttle cable goes into. I you see that. Here's the oil line, here's the throttle cable, and this may have something that indexes how much oil gets put out. Let's probably pop that carb off it's dumping fuel anyway and that the same thing with the carburetor the carburetor probably has a diaphragm there it is right there right there and usually what that does is sees vacuum from the engine knows the engine's cranking over and it allows fuel to flow through and then when the engine stops cranking it shuts the fuel off so I have a feeling the float is stuck causing that to happen well, it's nice to have the seat out of the way. It makes it easy to access the carb, actually. So, throttle cable is going to be this right here. We take those two screws. The slide should come out. I think it has a vacuum hose right there. This right here, with wires coming out of it, is probably going to be a fuel shutoff. You just unplug that, and then the fuel line going in. Uh, loosen the boot screw up. And pop it out. We'll put it on the bench. Take a peek what's going on inside. Let's get a urine sample out of it. See what we can get for fuel. It should still be fairly full. And the cup's clean, so we'll have an idea of what we're getting in the float bowl. Oh, it's coming out like, started to come out like mud at first. And that should be straight gas. There should be no premix in that. And it's a decent amount of fuel too for the size of that float bowl. You could tell that float wasn't shutting off. So the uh, two-stroke oil actually gets added with, where I said that was a vacuum line. It was a vacuum line, but it was vacuum connected to the oil. That's where the oil gets injected. Yeah, it's still going, huh? Judging by the color of that fuel, the carb's probably going to be a, a tad dirty. And we, we don't know how long this has been sitting, neither, so. Pop that bowl off of there. In case I didn't explain it, the machine's a two-stroke, and two-stroke does not have oil in the crankcase. It uses a premix with the gas. The gas goes to the bottom of the engine where the crankshaft is. The oil kind of like sticks and gets uh, stays behind. Tries to anyway. To do the best to lubricate the bottom end and lubricate the bottom of the cylinder walls. But too much <laughs> will cause it to smoke like a pig. So I don't know if we have a problem with that pump. What do we got? Yeah, a little bit of crap, but not terrible. Okay, new fuel is does not hold up all that great, so I don't know what the time frame of this was sitting. Hope we can get that needle out of there. 
Let me get a little poker. Get that needle out of there, and we'll see if that jet is dirty. So generally when a carburetor overflows fuel, it's either what's called the needle in the seat, which is what we're taking apart right now. The needle will be on the float. This will be the thing that'll be hanging down. That's the needle. The seat is the part that's on the inside right there. Generally, a little piece of crap will get stuck in between that window and not allow it to shut the fuel off all the way or the float sinks. Generally, the two issues that cause that. If you're getting puddles of fuel underneath something, underneath the carb, or the float levels off, but usually the float level doesn't just change on its own. You know, possibly it's sinking. And I'm gonna go quick look at that surface inside there, see if I see a little bit of crap in there. I get my old man magnifying glass. And yep, there is. Hopefully I can show it on camera. We're at about nine o'clock. You can see a little speck. I try to get the lighting right down there. There you go. And then right at nine o'clock, there's a little piece of speck of, of debris. Sometimes it's actually the fuel line too. Like the fuel line starts deteriorating from the inside and it'll break away. So that was what was happening. It was allowing when the float was coming up to try to shut the fuel supply off, maintain a certain level, the pin was not able to go against the seat all the way and shut it off. That's what we're wrong with that. While we're in there, we're going to go clean. That jet was the main jet. We're going to go pop that out of there, blow it out. Does it have an idle jet? It does, which is the little tiny one that's in the tube next to that. I'm going to go pop both of those out. If I can, I'm going to go clean those. And we'll try it again without the float coming over. Because what was happening was it was flooding over. When, when this does not shut the fuel off, the fuel level keeps going higher and higher and higher. And then at some point, where's the bowl? Generally what happens, it'll go up over this tit right here. The fuel level goes up over that and then that's the last ditch effort. It runs it out that hose and lets it uh, drip out of there. Go clean that bowl up some too. Yeah, one of the intentions to go pick up another item machine, we'll call it a machine. And this was a, on the side is a freebie. Says <laughs> you want that too? I said, sure. I'm just going to hold this up to the light and look through it. And it is partially clogged. Should put a look through this now, the little one, you're not going to be able to do that. It's going to be so tiny. The port's going to be so small on it. So the other one's really cool. The other item. We'll call it an item. It needs to wait for a little bit warmer weather, though. If that's a hint. And there's a little schmegma growing. Right down here in the base, there's a little bit of crap on that one, so. I'm not going to bother putting it in the ultrasonic cleaner, but I am going to do, just run some carb cleaner through it, blow it out. Looks pretty good. And let's get that out of the way. I'll do a little rinse on there. We'll pick out some of the, the sludge, these little pieces of crap. Because what happens is, you don't get rid of this stuff, these little particles, that gets put, drawn up into the jet eventually, and will clog the jet off. And most of the time, it's the idle one, because the idle one's even a tinier pinhole that's in it where this one's a little bit larger so yeah so this right here is gonna be electric choke it's gonna open up uh, an enrichment circuit when it gets power to it it'll allow the choke to come on I believe it's power on and then it goes away or it's gonna be vice versa powers off and then as it warms up it puts it energizes the solenoid and it shuts off. Not quite sure which way it operates, but that's what it does. There's no choke on here, and there was no uh, anything on the inside showing a solenoid blocking off one of the ports for the uh, main jets coming up. It, it would have been something that interrupted that fuel from getting sucked up. And again, this was for the oil injection. So the oil comes in here, goes into the engine, just a little port on the side, gets metered by how much throttle you give it. All that oil that we saw, we're going to keep an eye on this. Possibly this is ha uh, ha not on the carburetor, but you know, again, what's feeding it is either continuing to dump oil out or just from sitting, the crankcase filled up with two-stroke oil. There's a gas that was in it. Let's go dump that out and we'll take the pliers off. We might put vacuum to it for it to flow fuel, but let's go run that till we get some clean fuel. If not, we'll just dump the whole tank. Let's pop those vice grips off. 
see if we get any flow. Oh yeah. Yeah, just enough for to run the fuel line out though. Uh, I'm gonna have to create, me uh, just give it a quick crank. See if it'll go with a crank. Where's the spark plug wire? I'm gonna make sure that's not gonna spark anywhere near <laughs> our fuel, you know? Yeah, it's definitely got some age to it. Let that done trickle. Better when we had the first shot around, but not great. I'm not gonna dump it out yet. I'm gonna let this cup sit for a little bit. I wanna see if water kind of forms on the bottom and see if it took up a bunch of water. Yeah, I'd say that fuel's probably about five years old. If it took on a bunch of water right here, you would see a, a puddle formed on the bottom of it and it hasn't happened. So I'm gonna move forward with this because I'm lazy. I just have a piece of clear line going up the handlebars with a clamp on it and right there is where our fuel level is and it's holding. So that's a good sign. That means that the float, the needle and seat are uh, stopping the fuel from coming in any further. Let's give her a shot, see what we get. Let's see what happens. Pop that plug out real quick. Let me see if it's flooded out again. The thing with a, a two-stroke again, it uses the bottom of the crankcase first, and it could really do a job flooding it out and take a while for it to clear out. Doesn't look too bad. I'm gonna go dry that up a little bit though, and I'm also gonna check, recheck for spark, and see how it looks. Looking right there. Yeah, spark's plenty good. That's not the issue. Try to get to run for a second and let it kind of clear out. some other kind of issue spark was not the issue maybe that's what they thought it was but something is happening where I think either we have crank seals I'm just guessing we have crank seals possibly that are leaking in or just the top end is wore out and there's no compression so let's go pop the plug at it real quick go put our finger over the hole and give her a crank and see how it feels yeah yeah <laughs> never mind so rightfully she kind of push my finger off when I go to crank it She doesn't feel too bad. Yeah. It's got something there. But the mix just feels wrong. It feels like it's not getting the correct air fuel mix. Uh, what do you want to go try? It just sometimes too what happens is a plug will fire in the open, but you go into compression and it doesn't. It's not for just for the help, I'm gonna go throw another plug in it real quick and see if it makes any difference for us. Let's yeah, see if it makes any difference. Well, 
Well, I'm kind of suspecting we are having a engine internals issue, possibly. So what I'm gonna go do is take those, we got three or four screws on the intake. We're gonna go take those away and we should be able to look at the sides of the rings and the piston and see if they're beat up. Let's see what we get. This one's actually got reed valves and they are those right there. I'm gonna go throw a little bit of gas in them. Let's that set for a second. Reed valve is a, a one-way door. It allows it when the piston uh, creates a vacuum to draw in, but then when the piston goes the other direction, it blocks the passage going back. They look like they're sealing pretty good. So I don't see a reed valve problem. Unfortunately, we can't see the bottom of the piston or the side of the piston through there. We could do it through the exhaust. Whether that's going to be viable for us or not, I'm not sure. Let's go take a peek where. If you want to get that off, lay the bike on its side and see what we got going on. Hmm. And yeah, we got to our underbelly. Here we get this pipe out of our way. What is that? What would that do? Maybe a spring or something went to that? It's the last one. It almost looks like it's designed to break off if you try taking it off, right? Nope. Also has like a weird emissions pipe coming off of it. Not quite sure what goes on with that. How much stuff can you put on 50 cc's? This this over here going onto it. And she's locked up. Take a peek. He's definitely soaked pretty good. Can we, what can we access to turn this with? I don't see anything standing out right away as far as um, scoring. Going on, that's kind of what we're looking for. It still can be. Let's um, pop this cover off and the fan. We should be able to turn it with the fan. There we go. There we go. Let's go see if we can rotate. The board looks pretty good. I'm looking on, I'm trying to look at the back wall. I guess there, hold on. I'm looking at that back wall back there. I'm looking for scoring going up. I see a little bit. Nothing terrible. Look at the restriction they got on this exhaust port, huh? Compared to the size of the pipe coming out of it. Let's go take a look at those rings real close. Don't see anything. Let's go poke at them with a the stick a little bit. Whatever it was, it's kind of like a, an instant feel because he said we're just riding it and it just died. And it's only got 500 miles on it. It's not like it's got a ton of miles. I'm just looking for a ring to make sure it's not broke. That one's got spring to it. feels pretty good. I don't, I don't know about. Yeah, it's got some spring to it. Not saying that it doesn't have a break on the other side. I think what you possibly do... The other thing I'm thinking of too is that maybe we lost a crank seal is the only other guess on my part. And we already get the side cover off. Let's go get this out of the way, get the magneto out of the way and see if we can see anything. If we did, we should probably see some gas. That's for me. Normally you would see some gas kind of, you know, wetness around here. Moisture, if you will. 
There's a tore piece of paper gasket right there. Yeah, let's get this off. Take a peek under the flywheel. Get that nut out of the way. You need a little puller. It goes down on the threads on the outside of this and it'll push off the center. Let me go see if I have one. I can get that washer out of our way. No? Fine. So, this, hopefully the threads are the right size. It's got two different sizes on it. You can flip it over. And hopefully one of them work. There we go. Run that in, and that goes and pushes off the center and pulls up on it. Let's see if we get that to pop for us. Get. Something to support it. There it goes. We're in. I'm not seeing anything jump out of us right away. Let's keep digging. It's it, it just what I'm kind of suspecting right now. It, it just seems like it, the way it quit so quickly is that possibly the seal blew out. Could be on the other side too yet, so. Sometimes you could draw a little vacuum on it too if you have the capacity to do so on the crankcase and you could tell if you have a, a leaking seal. I figured you wanted to see the inside of one of these anyway, right? How boring of a video it would have been. It just fired up and had no issues. Let's see if we can get that out of there. There's one piece. And we got to that come out of there? Not trashing it? Nope. Damn it. So there's, we can see the pump too, the little oil pump I was talking about. So that's the oil pump, yeah, I don't know if you can see it. I'll get, get you close. Here's the oil pump drive. And that, as it spins, as the RPMs come up, and then here's the throttle that you're giving it, as you're giving it more and more throttle, allows more or less oil. So it knows how fast it's going, and it knows how um, much oil to give out. McCoonies written on it. So the seal's a little further down. I'm wondering, I don't think we're going to be able to get those screws out to get this up out of our way. It's got a locating pin. Yeah, let's go see if we can get that ring, snap ring, off of there. Let's see if we can lift straight up on that, get it out. Should be able to see, see the seal behind it. I don't suspect this side is an issue. It's looking pretty clean, but we're this far, right? Tell it's warm out. All the bikes are out. It's been a while. Well, it's <laughs> it's 50 degrees out. Let's put it that way. There's no salt on the roads, so hopefully we can lift straight up on that. Maybe, maybe not. Get some little kind of pry looking things to jab underneath it. There you go. There you go. That pump's gonna turn too, so I can come up. I'm trying to, I don't want to grab it over here because it's threads. What a big ass pair of water pumps. Looks pretty good. I don't see an issue. Is that pin gonna fall out on us? Yeah. Let's go pop.
Well, that sucked. Let this strip out. Another well, snap ring in there. I'm gonna go pop that out of our way. Let's go see if we can get that pin out of there. There you go. So we'll get that snap ring out. And we could probably just put some fuel. Turn that light. Put some fuel around it. And we'll see if. Uh, am I gonna need a straight on her? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go dump some fuel around that. I want to see if it maintains a level on top or if it just all sinks right in. Let that fill up for a second. Looks pretty good. I don't see it doing anything that it shouldn't be. looking at that edge right there with the, where I puddled it up to see if it would maintain see if it's lifted or anything again he said it was an immediate stop when it stopped running so hey what do you say we want to flip it over and we'll maybe we'll take a quick peek at the other side Other than that, it's going to be the, the fact that compression is just so low, it won't run, but I'm not canceling that out yet. Uh, the displacement is so hard, uh, so small, it's hard to put a compression tester on it. You get a good reading on it. It's just the nature of, of the, the amount of compressed air it's moving in. The compression test that I have is meant more for a car. It probably won't even show up on there, so that's why I'm avoiding using that. I just flipped it over. Let's get rid of the kickstand. Kickstand. Kick start. On these, you gotta take the bolt all the way out. Shifters and kickstarters have a, a shoulder in them. You loosen the bolt up and you'll think, why can't I get it off of there? Because in the center, there's a little bit of a, like a taper that the bolt locks itself into and it can't come out until you take the bolt all the way out. All right, let's go buzz. All these screws off around the center of the cover, and it'll be a belt drive underneath there. A little CVT transmission. It only has 500 miles on it too, so let's go see how that kickstart. Look at that apparatus, huh? It's a sprag that goes right on there. Let's go see if we see any moisture spitting out around it. I don't see a thing. I don't think any of that is our issue. I don't think too like I when I'm on an older machine, not so much on a new one like this, and it's just dying is the fuel of the uh, exhaust can get plugged with too much carbon coming out of it and they will plug themselves up a solid. I don't see anything. I'm not gonna pull that clutch out of there yet, that whole assembly. I'm, gonna, I'm not seeing any like dampness. If we saw something around there, I would definitely say that that is an issue, but I do not. All right, so we're going to go check next. Uh, we could probably put the ignition back together on the other side. 
I believe it came with here's the other thing too is what if it's got spark but the sparks at the wrong time could be an issue and then again we can still have an issue with the inside of the engine being puked out and it just doesn't have any compression still don't have the answers kind of half has to do it back together I just want to see what we get no exhaust is on it but all the electricals hooked up and it's got fuel in it let's see what we get hold the brake in Try giving it any throttle, it dies though. Let's go throw that exhaust back on and we'll top up the fuel. I am wondering if the exhaust has that, I'm not quite sure what it's going to. This right here, just some sort of emissions or something that is in the middle of that. If that's some kind of feedback for it the way it's run. We can get clip, you know, we'll put it on and we'll, we'll try it. Then we'll try clipping it and see if it goes away. Uh, there could be a restriction in the exhaust too. But it should have still revved right then, and it didn't. Is what I was talking about. That extra hose where the where that goes up to. All right, just a quick recap. So at first, it would kind of fart and cough, run, smoke real bad, die, wouldn't idle. Try to give it any throttle, it would kind of fall on its face and die. We took it apart, looked for crank seals, looked at the carb, found some, you know, you know, the bat fuel and everything that was in with the carb. Looked at the magnet behind the magneto for the. Crank seals being leaking, looked at the revalves, didn't see anything. Took the exhaust off, looked up at the piston, saw if we saw anything with the rings that looked funny, like a burned up cylinder, didn't see anything. And now we put it back together minus the exhaust. It idled, would not take any gas. Now the exhaust is back on. Everything's haphazard, you know, it's not, nothing's permanent. We're just trying to still troubleshoot. Let's go crank it again, see what we get. Let's go take off that one hose going up to wherever, that one that we kind of questioned on the exhaust, and see if we get any difference with that off. See if we reach it from here. Either brake work. Go open the flange up. So it has a bit of an exhaust leak right there. More of an exhaust leak.
more fuel in it. Won't take any throttle. I'm gonna let it run for a while, clear up some of the exhaust. That's probably the work. Yeah. Makes no difference. Loaded up with oil, huh? Sometimes you need the rest of the air cleaner on it. I'm not saying that that's what the issues are, but sometimes it needs the rest of the air cleaner for the carburetor to work correctly. It's running out of gas now. Got a pretty good flow going for us. Light detector working. Plus, you do a function check on it while it's running, right? Directionals are working. You know the horn works. Low beam, high beam. And it's out of gas. <laughs> it's got no cooling either. So, I, I don't know. I, I don't have an answer to it. It's uh, the restriction on the exhaust, which you know it has a restriction just because of the style that it is. I don't think it's got an internal restriction. It doesn't feel like it putting over the end. Usually it won't have any flow going through it at all. Um, and it still wouldn't rev without the exhaust on it. So, that, so that's not it. Let's get the air cleaner assembly, which was in the seat box and see if we can go throw the boot on the end of it and we get any difference. Here's that air box and you can see it goes through a bunch of baffles and a filter on the inside. And this is the intake part of it right here. So how drag is across that box. Sometimes affects the lip of the carburetor right here on these ports coming in, what, how much is being fed into it. It kind of directs the air and causes drag too. It causes it to say choke the carburetor. Let's go see. All right, air cleaner's on. run for a little bit, keep it clears up. Burn up some of the oil that's in the lower part of the crankcase. that slide out of that carb and make sure it's not missing something maybe they took it apart and, and like there's a pin that drops down in the main jet that is not there is my guess so we're gonna go take these two screws back out again we'll lift this cable up take a look at the inside of that slide let's go pop that out of there the needles there is it it's got the resistance on it. There's like a clip on the inside that holds that in place. Hmm. 
strange, I tell you. I'll figure this one out. Let's go hit the throttle. Let's let that sit there and hit the throttle. I'm sure. And you never know what you know somebody else somebody else has gone through and done. It looks like it's in the correct order. Just looking to see that that needle is seated. What happens is this allows more air, this allows more fuel. You'll pull up on the throttle and it should be fairly matched together. I don't see anything out of whack. It looks fairly correct. There's two ways this can go in. Well, there's one way it can go in. A lot of people screw it up though. You'll see there's a thin channel. And on the other side, there's like a thick channel over there. That thick channel is the idle speed on that little ramp. And the thin one right here goes on this pin as a locator. So it goes in like, like that. Allows it to slide all the way down. Put the screws back in it. Let's go fire it up again. Let's try it again. It's filled up with fuel again too. out of it that's our issue it's getting closer though at least it's to the point where it stays running at an idle uh, exhaust restriction don't again I, I do think this is all packed up with oil I think that was more an effect from the cause later I don't think that was the original problem that we had an issue I think that happened later on I did find over by the parts I'll show you they did crack the seat open. I know there were some parts that were in there. And in there was another magneto whole system. And it looks like a plug and a CDI. Does that look newer used? Hard to tell, huh? And this looks like... I don't know, you think that's newer used? That's standing on the back there. I'm gonna say maybe they tried changing it out. I wonder if we're having a problem where it's got uh, some sort of built-in advance. And it knows from the RPMs, you know, from uh, the pickup to know to advance. Let's, and it's not doing that. It's just still rev though. That just really got me. Let's go find where this is. We'll throw this in. Swap it and see if we lose spark or, you know, whatever happens. We're looking for some kind of change. We're looking for something that, you know, either happened to the machine or somebody has put in the play causing more problems than the original one that was there. And, you know, someone's been here before us. And I'd say that might be our victim right there, huh? Yeah, I wouldn't think that would be the factory one. Right? It definitely wouldn't be the factory one with all that running on here. Let's go unplug that and we'll swap it and put the other one in. Well, I don't know. That's the factory holder right there. And there's no way that that one just fits in there. And if you look, well, that one's bigger. Go figure, right? <laughs> go try it, see what we get. Yeah, it might not even run at all. I have no spark. Who knows? Not it. <laughs> well, there's an issue. I'm quickly gonna go pop that other one in. Make sure I didn't hit the uh, kill switch. Nope. I'm gonna pop the other one in real quick. See if it fires back up again. Swapped over. Key still on?
We just ran out of fuel too. Let's see if we have any intake leak. Don't see anything. Man, this one's got me. This one's kicking my ass a little bit. Hmm. No rev. Why don't you want to rev? Hmm, I have to sleep on this one. Well, I see we go back into that carb again. I want to go check an enrichment circuit and some other stuff and see if somebody maybe was in there and we're missing a piece and it's just not getting anything on the main side of things. It, it just has it. It just seems that way that it's just not getting any fuel other than coming off the idle circuit. Now to go back apart, the only thing I see so far is the seal looks like it was rolled or pinched right there. I don't know if that was causing an issue or not. I would generally a float bowl is vented to the outside. So having a leak there, I don't think would cause an issue. Come on. Where's my little, where's my little stabber? There it is. I'm gonna blow through that mean. It's clear. Again, that slide, that pin would be on the other side of this Venturi and it would allow more fuel to be drawn up. It just doesn't seem to want to take it. I'm not one for giving up. Get out of there real quick. Let's try pushing that Venturi down. See if we can get that to pop right out of there. And we have a, a bad O ring or something around it. I should have cleaned the first time around, which I did not. I'm going to look real quick and make sure those pores are open. I do see some crap around there. Sometimes they have an O-ring on that part of it too. Let me go look real quick underneath the... I do not see them being clogged. I should take another part. I should <laughs> just learn that every time, tear the carb down to nothing and clean it. Let's get that enrichment, electric choke, whatever you want to call it, out of there. Another thing I was thinking too, I wonder if that emulsion tube was all the way up. It wasn't in the flow. It's kind of like, like a straw. You put it in water and, and uh, you blow air across the top of it and it draws. And if it's not up in the path of the flow of air, usually they protrude about eh, between like an eighth and a quarter of an inch into the, the path of the air that's going through the carburetor. Let's see if we got anything here. Again, this is just going to be electric solenoid that should fire and pull itself in as needed to add more fuel when it's cold. Let's go pop that. Let me go blow through that real quick. Feels like it's clear. Let's go throw that emulsion tube in real fast. 
And you'll see what I mean by the, the passage of it. Make sure that was... See how much it sits in the pathway there? That looks about right though. I, I was just kind of questioning how far this was tightened up in there. Like it could have went down further. It looks normal though. I don't see anything wrong with that. Hmm. Not seeing anything guys. I don't know what's causing it. I wonder if it has just spark. Eh. Like something telling the spark not to like being governed electronically. We can test that. I don't think that's our issue though. Hmm. If it's 12 volts across that you, you can see if it fires and draws in. You probably just put an ohm meter across it too. We can ohm it out and just make sure that uh, the coil on the inside is good. We could plug it in the bike. <laughs> Turn the key on, right? Kind of needs to be guided. You know, it, it sits in a sleeve that kind of supports it in the center. Well, let's just go turn the key on and see what we get. <laughs> Runs with no carburetor. Yeah, let's... I wonder if that might be suspect. Let's go take an uh, ohmmeter. A little, a little hard to probe that. Let's go take an ohmmeter and probe that. And I wonder if that passage, like we were talking about earlier, in run mode, it just pulls down. I would think it would just be for a cold period of time, not all the time. That's maybe, maybe why it doesn't fire now. But If the coil's no good in it, then we know it's beat. I would think for a coil, we should see like, like three ohms across it. You know, something very, very low. If it's like 58K, it might be an issue. So that coil looks to be okay. Open, touch. Well, it jumps to 31, hold on. Get a better bite on it. Yeah. It's weird, huh? It goes right from, uh, it goes to like. And then jumps to 31. <laughs> can we... Say, can we run it without that even in there? Mm. Alright, so it's the next day. I've had a night to kind of sleep on it. Put the carburetor back together. We'll throw that back on. Confirm that everything is still the same status as what it is. And I think at this point, we are probably chasing a spark issue where it's either not advancing or it's at the wrong time, something along those lines. So what we can do is we'll put the original components back on, which I, do, I think actually this is probably the original one because the other one has that aftermarket writing on it like it's a high performance one. And then we'll do the same with the... Uh, stator assembly that goes on there. We'll put that other stator back on which I think was probably the original one too. Start from scratch or start from the original components and not introduce other stuff that may be suspect and we'll go from there. The process of putting that carb back on, one thing that looks odd to me is that throat, you're looking at the gap between here and here. Generally on a carburetor, 
I idle. It's about that much open, just a hair. Work the throttle. Like that throttle is already half open, and here's the stop. That's on the side of it. We'll take it right out. I don't know if the cable is limiting how far that drops or something else is causing the issue. But something's not right right there. I don't believe I have that pin in upside down. It's normal how it would look. It's possible though. Yeah, something's just. Pop the bowl back off. I'm gonna go see. I'm gonna go drop the main out of it, and we'll see if that drops down further. If that's the case, that needle is running into something it shouldn't be, and if not, maybe the cables they just have it. To, maybe they got it running, and, and that was the area where it idled. And I also see that the uh, adjuster is loose too. So let's go. Let's go run that in. That might be the case right there, huh? Cable down to close up. Oh, yeah, yes, yeah, so that's what it is. They ran the cable so to, to try to keep it running, whoever was playing with it before ended up doing that to increase the throttle. Now that we messed it up, it won't, it won't idle at all. All right, let's go put it back together, see what we get. Here we go, cold start. <laughs> Break. Let's go change out the stator assembly first. I have a feeling that other one we tried, it doesn't work, but it might work with the combination of what's there. Or uh, I'm, it's starting to look, I think I'm just speculating that the original one failed, the black one, it was probably one that was in it. That failed. They've got an aftermarket one, the aftermarket one does not work correctly. That's where I'm going right now. Now, before we do that, Look at the pickup, it's on an angle. You even see on the screws how it's kind of cocked on an angle. Let's straighten that up. It actually almost looks like it's touching it. I wonder if that might be interfering with its signal a little bit. Just that one. Just pry up on it. There we go. I don't know what the air gap should be, but it should be a little bit better than what was there. That would also be the timing of it. But I don't think we can affect the timing that much. Let's go a little bit more. Let's increase that gap. That's pretty decent. Just want to make sure it's not touching, you know? Give it a fire. I might have found it. So I was in the process of unwiring, unplugging that little harness and that red wire was going to this taped up wire. And if you notice, 
that's green on that side. And this wire, blue with a white tracer, or white and blue. And that wire is blue and yellow. You would think that they would put a male and a female opposite of each other so that you can wire them backwards. I'm gonna go quickly go give that a shot and see if we get anything. Yeah. Don't trust that. There might have been a uh, screw up. And I think one of those is a signal for RPM. And I would think it would be like an advanced and a retard, a tad. I got them swapped. Quickly put back together, let's go try it one more time. my ass will you well there you go the coil got the cdi got put in and two wires got swapped around and i think one of them was signal for uh the rpms and so it was not allowing any kind of advance we got it ha! kicked my ass awesome let's go button up all the crap that is on this and get the air cleaner hooked up and the exhaust bolted correctly and all the pieces on like they should but how cool is that we got it yeah man that was a good one you want to see the the um the uh cvt transmission work so on low speeds well the clutch the, actually the clutch is back here is, is kind of a different setup usually a lot of times it's the uh centrifugal clutch is on the front not the back but pulleys will change size for gear ratio so it's an automatic transmission right now you see it's got a very small pulley here very fat on here well as it revs up you get speeds going this has weights on it squeezes this pulley together this belt will go on the outside and this belt will get drawn into the center it just changes the gear ratio on the back tire before we button it up let's go do a little show and tell Normally I get rid of that. It's about four bucks right there. <laughs> Dilute that in about 20 gallons of good stuff. Tried saving the battery. Threw it on the charger and like spiked it a couple of times with a heavy charge. Sometimes it brings them back. But if it was a six volt battery, it'd be good. Unfortunately it's not. So she's got a couple of dead cells. I'm gonna throw it back in there just so that it has a placeholder for something for the charging system to kind of bounce off of. Sometimes the charging systems, the regulator is the battery on cheaper stuff. Don't know if that's the case here or not, but we're gonna throw that in there and it does have kickstart, so. I do that battery in there. I don't think it's gonna do very much of anything. Yeah, nothing even lights up. <laughs> yeah. Let's go through the uh, jumper pack on it. Let's see if we can fire it up. So it should be all buttoned up. Might have to adjust the carb. I don't know the idle speed and all that. And it's gonna have to prime the fuel system. We'll see what we get if she starts. It's gonna, I know it's gonna take a second for it to fill up the carb. Oh, baby. Watch it not run, man. Just let it run for a second.
Don't know if the battery's gonna affect the chart, the uh, how it runs. Lights seem to be okay. I think it'll stall if I disconnected the jumper pack. No. I think it'll rev. <laughs> Seems a little loaded up. All that, all that crap still has to get cleared out of it. Well, I don't have it registered, but fortunately, it's got nice little knobby tires on it. What do you say we take it for a spin in the sand pit? If it stalls, it's got a kickstart, and it's easy to push. <laughs> Not liking that battery. Let's see if we bring those RPMs up a little. Battery's doing that low, you know. Clutch is in engaging, it's forever. Maybe a little higher. It does have that air fuel mix too. I may go tweak that after we run it. Generally, in the cold, the idle will be down. As it warms up, it kind of comes up. Got a tack on it? No. Okay. Too bad I can't. The jumper pack won't fit in there. Probably got like a little battery put down there. We could just run leads up to it. I just don't want to kill the charging system on it by having something that's so fried. Imagine the theme of Born to be Wild. Oh yeah. Definitely sit on it a lot higher than I expected. I'm kind of tippy toeing. breaks up a lot. Let's see if she'll clear up. <laughs> We're supposed to top out at 30. 30 would be right there for a 49 cc. That's probably what they got them governed to, you know? Fix 
legs now. Push them back a little. So anything over half throttle, it breaks up. I wonder if somebody tried adjusting the uh, the carb, the, the pin on the carburetor usually has adjustments how far it comes out. They may have lifted that up to try to get it to run better. So I think one last ditch effort, we're gonna go and take that and change that pin up a little bit. That may just have so much oil in the bottom of the crankcase that's trying to burn because it does still smoke pretty good. And that's just gonna be two stroke oil, lots of it. <laughs> The other part I'm thinking too is that they, uh, the chart that um, CDI being wired backwards, it might have damaged it some, and then the higher RPM is not working correctly. Okay, just that's the RPM where it breaks up. Come on, baby. So we gotta take this apart. This pin have positions it can go in. Seems like it might be right. Looks like it's on the middle one. So I'm gonna go and lower that pin so it gets a little less fuel, a little more air, see if that four stroking goes away. If the four stroking doesn't go away, then I'm gonna say it's just damage that the CDI got. So you move the C clip. Go all the way. We'll make a see if we get any major adjustment on it too. So that's gonna allow the pin to stay lower, allowing less fuel to hit higher RPMs to drop in. Make sense? If not, I think the parts of these are fairly cheap as far as electronics are concerned. Maybe we'll order another one of those CDIs. Probably like 20 bucks or something. At least it runs. All right, I'll bring you back. All right, let's see if it'll kickstart. Got a dead battery, you know that, but kind of went. I wouldn't want to rely on that.
right guys well it still has a little bit of an issue again it is not getting the full rev out of it but it does get to the point where you can ride it so i'm going to call this one a mostly successful video <laughs> how's that i'm going to order a battery for it i'm going to order a new cdi i do believe that's what got taken out i think it was wired backwards and it probably did a little bit of a electrical damage to the cdi not allowing it to rev but <clears throat> For this one, I think we're going to call it. I'm out of time. I got to get the video together, get it up for you guys to watch. And hopefully we can get on the other machine that came with this, which is uh, really nice compared to, not that this was bad, uh, but for what it is, I think it would be a really cool video. But that's uh, a little bit of time off yet. For this one, we're done, guys. Thanks for hanging out. I'll see you soon. Later.